Like, this is crazy. So I feel like I've been in this business my whole life. Um, I started as a kid actor. I did tons of theater and commercials and I auditioned for TV and film in Chicago where I'm from. And from there, when I turned 18, I realized I really love this business and I love the TV and film production and development and I love reading scripts, but I didn't necessarily want to be in front of a camera, which was when I kind of really, for the first time, thought about maybe managing or working in casting. And so I started interning at a management company and with a casting director. And from there, I got my first job in casting where I got to work on two amazing Nickelodeon shows and I got to meet the most amazing kids. And my old boss, Krisha Bullock, just taught me so, so, so much about the audition process, what to look for in a great audition, what we look for in talent. And from there, I kind of took a step back and was like, when I worked in management, I got to really be hands-on with my clients and with the company's clients. And so I felt like management was the natural step because I could take all of my experience from casting, from being an actor, from when I interned as, at a management company. And I just kind of took, took the dive and haven't looked back since. What's a typical day as a manager? What do you do for your clients and how often do you correspond with them? Management is a really interesting job because I don't do the same thing two days in a row basically. Every client is different. Every client's needs are different. Um, and you know, some of my clients are primarily focused on TV and film. Some of them are doing a lot of social media deals and new media series and things like that. So as a manager, I guide your entire career. So it's not just TV and film. It's not just new media. It's not just commercials. It's not just print. I am here to oversee everything. So I spend my day communicating with my clients, reading scripts. I read a lot of books to option IP so that we can take those projects out with some of our lit clients and we can you know, sell that project to a studio or a network or whatever it may be and then attach our clients to those projects. Um, so I kind of do a whole bunch of different things. This morning I um, had two different social media deals come in. So I, you know, that was the first thing I did today was check my email, see that this brand wants to partner with this client, this brand wants to partner with this client. So then I reach out to their, um, digital agents who kind of handle their brand deals, loop them in, and then we go from there. But every single day is different, and that's what I love about it, is it, every day brings a new challenge, every day brings a new victory, and you, you kind of just, you don't know what it's gonna bring. Like, you must be like balancing a lot of even their personal lives with their, the business aspect. That's, that's a lot. Yeah, I think the big thing for me is like at the end of the day, I want my clients to live very full lives. I don't want this business to be their whole lives. So last year I had a client who needed to go to prom. More than anything, she needed to go to prom. And so we, we did everything we could. She was working, we got her shoot dates adjusted, we got her on a plane, we got her home and she got to go to prom. Oh. Um, and that was truly like, that made me so happy. That wasn't like, you know, it, it wasn't that she booked something, it wasn't that, you know, we were moving her career forward is just that she got to do something that I felt was important for her life. Like I never wanted her to look back and be like, oh my God, I didn't get to go to prom. Oh, that's amazing. So what has been like a highlight of your career as a manager so far? Well, anyone who, anyone who knows me that you would ask that question would say, oh, when Sadie booked Kim Possible, um, that, that process was the most incredible process. And to be there from you know, the, like day one, truly the first day Sadie got to California and started auditioning to when she booked it. And I got to tell her she was officially going to be Kim Possible, especially because Kim Possible was such a part of my childhood and growing up. I loved the cartoon. I watched it incessantly. So that was, I mean, that was unbelievable. Um, it, just in general, anytime a client books that, you know, kind of game changer job, the job that's going to really help their career take off. It's, it's pretty cool. I have a, a young woman who just booked a feature that we can't share yet, but we're so excited. And it was very similar to, you know, Sadie's Kim Possible journey. She auditioned so many times casting. They looked at everyone in town and every single time they just kept coming back to her. And the casting director actually like played a, a joke on me when she got it. She calls and she goes, I'm so sorry, Taylor. And I just like, all of the blood rushed out of me and I like was I was like it's fine it's okay like thank you guys so much for everything and she's like hashtag she got it I was like oh 
I was like walking to get coffee as I was calling her and I literally like stopped in my tracks. Um, so those days are incredible. Um, anytime I get to call a client and tell them that really their dreams coming true, which sounds kind of cliche, but those are good days. I, that must have been life changing for her as well to get that it, role. It was. And, you know, I got to go up to set and see her in like in the suit, like, doing her thing. And I, but I like, she was like standing on like an elevated platform and I walked and I just started so like literally sobbing. Cause I was like, oh my Before goodness. Really that development too. Like you started with them at like their newest, they're the, the first stage of their career and you're watching them and having such a part in it. It's so cool. You said she flew to LA. So how do you work with someone who doesn't live in LA or before they're at the point where they should move to LA? I actually um, found Sadie at a convention kind of like CMTC in Texas. And her and her mom, um, they went to Texas for the convention. They're from South Carolina. And she came for two weeks. That was it. They were going to come to California for two weeks during pilot season. We were going to have her go on some auditions, just kind of see what happens. I could not have told you that she was going to be there for two weeks and two weeks was going to turn into nine. And at the end of nine weeks, she was going to book that job. I can't predict that. I can't. So when I work with talent, from out of state or out of country. I do have clients in Australia and Canada. It's, it's case by case. And that's the thing about management. It's, it's not one size fits all. Some clients, they come to LA and they never leave. Some clients come for a few weeks at a time and they audition and they book things and then they come back and forth. Um, my clients who are in Australia and Canada, it's a little bit different. Um, sometimes we'll have them come for pilot season to get in the room. Sometimes we'll have them tape from out of country. It just depends. Um, Management is a very personal relationship, and so how I work with each client is personalized to what each client needs. You must have a great memory to remember all of these different aspects of somebody's life. I, I think I have a good memory. I do. I also write a lot of things down, and I have a great team and a great assistant who kind of help me keep everything in balance and in check. And you're our go-to gal with self-tape. So can you talk about the essential components of a self-tape and give advice for like first-time self-tapers? So self-tapes are a huge part of our industry. 10 years ago, self-tapes did not exist in the way that they did. You used to literally have to tape on a VHS tape at either your agent's office or at a self-tape studio. And then you would take the tape and then you would overnight it to LA. And then the casting directors would have to put the VHSs in one at a time and watch people's tapes. That is not how our business is anymore. I have clients that self-tape from home very effectively. They have great setups, they use great light, natural light, um, great affordable studio lighting. I have a lot of clients that use ring lights that are available on Amazon. Um, so that I think is, the first thing that is super important for a self-tape is great high quality lighting so that we can really see you. When you're doing a self-tape, you can absolutely tape on your phone. When you do that, you don't wanna hold your phone this way, you wanna hold your phone this way. Watch tapes, this is how they get uploaded. So not this way, not like you're recording for Instagram or TikTok, this way for a self-tape. So for the mechanics of a self-tape, hold your phone this way. Great natural light. You always want to work with a reader. So the reader will read the other character's lines. You want to set them up just off to the side of the camera. You don't want to look into the camera. You want to look at your reader. And you should always, always, always be memorized on a self-tape. So completely memorized because I want you to completely engage with that reader. I don't want you you know, breaking character and, and looking down. In an audition, I typically think it's fine to hold your sides. If you need to look, it's okay. But when you're on a self-tape, I want you so focused, so engaged, so in the moment. And here's the other thing. With a self-tape, you can take as many takes as you need. You can do it as many times as you want. I'm never going to know if you did it one time or a hundred times. Put your absolute best foot forward every time. And take your time. That's the other thing. This is not a rush. It's not a race. <laughs> Take as much time as you need. Don't worry about how much time someone else needs. Do your best job and give your best take. Why is a talent headshot so important and what makes a good talent headshot? So your headshot is your first impression. When I first meet an actor, when I first send an actor to casting, the headshot is the first thing that they see. Headshots 
should show your personality. They should be authentic to you. They should look like you. I know that that's kind of a basic concept, but I want to pick up your headshot and immediately know who you are. Headshots are very subjective. Everyone has their own idea of what makes a good headshot. So for me, I, because with my clients, the target is TV and film. While I manage in all areas, and I do have a lot of clients that are doing social media deals and commercials, I surround my business on theatrical work. So TV, film, we work with a lot of writers as well. They don't typically use headshots, so that's another conversation. But for my clients, I like solid backgrounds, not a ton of depth of field. I can work with a little bit as long as the lighting is great. I want great natural lighting, preferably taken in a studio, <laughs> which is kind of a mouthful. Great natural light in a studio. Great backdrops, not bright colors. I don't like bright colored shirts. For commercials, bright colored shirts are great, but for TV and film, I like grays, I like dark greens, I like navy blues, and it really depends on your skin tone as well. So again, every headshot's personal, every headshot is targeted for that actor, but at the end of the day, the thing I care most about is that your personality is coming through your eyes. So what would you recommend wearing for um, callbacks at CMTC, for example, or a self-tape or casting? I think the answers kind of vary. For CMTC, I want to see something that shows your personality. Um, and if, if you love pink, I want you to wear pink. On a self-tape, I want you to wear something that feels like that character. I don't want you to wear a costume. I don't want you to like dress up. That's not what this is about. I want casting to be able to look at you and see you in the role. And a lot of the times that means just wearing, you know, a t-shirt or a tank top or whatever it might be. But, you know, if you're auditioning for Riverdale and you're auditioning to be a Southside Serpent, throw a leather jacket on. Love that. But like a little detail. Wear whatever puts you in that character. So... Obviously, it seems to you're looking for new faces, but do you look for prior experience? Like before you're willing to manage someone, what do you kind of look for for the resume as far as training or anything like that? Well, that, and that's what I look for. I look for training okay. because when I take someone on, I want to introduce you to the town. I want to introduce you to casting directors. And for me to do that with confidence, I need to know that you have a great solid foundation so that you can go into those rooms and do your best job. I want you to put your best foot forward in every single room. And the best way to do that is with great training. So that's the first thing I look for. I look for what coaches you're working with, what classes you're taking. Have you done things like CMTC? Have you really made the most of every opportunity you've been given? And are you continuing to train? You know, there, there is no end point in your training. It's not like I've done this now, I'm done. No, I want to see that you're continuing to work on your craft. I want to know that you're watching TV. I want to know that you're watching film. When I ask you, oh, what are you watching? It's not a loaded question. It's not a trick question. I'm genuinely curious because I find that people tend to watch the kinds of things that they want to be on. So if I ask you like, hey, what are you watching? And you're like, oh, nothing. Yeah. Oh, well, what have you, like, what have you watched? What do you love? Like, what's your favorite movie? Like, those are my first questions that I ask. And anyone who's had a callback with me at CMTC will tell you that is the first thing I ask is, what are you watching? What are you studying? What, what films have you seen that spark joy? Like, what was the turning point that made you go, wow, I want to do that. I want to be an actor. Well, and it's such a personal question too, because, you know, I have clients that love comedy and that's where they excel and that's what they want to be doing. And on the flip side, I have people who just drama is their happy place. They love those dark, deep moments, those conversations that just like bring tears to your eyes. That's what they do. Like, that's what they do. That's what they love. And so it really helps me get to know what you're looking to do as well. So what are you looking for and what are you scouting for at CMTC and your best piece of advice to how to prep for CMTC? So one of the coolest things about my job is that I get to work with a huge range and variety of actors. I have actors that have been working for 15 years that were, you know, on Disney Channel and are now adults. And then I also work with new faces, people that, you know, this is really their first audition, their first professional audition. And so when I come to CMTC, I'm really looking for great personalities, people who love this business. That's part of it. Like I want to work with people who want to be actors because they love acting at the heart of it. Um, I look for people who listen, you know, who, when I ask questions, really take the time to hear what I'm saying. Cause that's a huge part of acting, right? Is listening and responding. Um, so people who give me really thoughtful answers and the people that 
are there just to learn and to see how they can further their craft and their passion. So those are the big kind of things I look for. Um, people ask me all the time if I know uh, immediately if I'm going to work with someone and the, the true answer is no, uh, because management is a very personal relationship. And what, one of the most important things about managing is finding the right manager for you and for your personality and that your personality matches with your manager. So a lot of the times I take a lot of time and talk to people, get to know people. I'll do follow up meetings after, um, and we'll jump on now zoom, I guess is the future. Um, and really take some time to get to know what you're looking to do and to make sure that I'm the right fit for you as much as that you're the right fit for me because it is a partnership. It's not, oh, that's my manager or this or like we work together. And so I really like to find people that I can really do that with. My best piece of advice for everyone coming to CMTDC is to really take the time and prepare and not focus on what anyone else is doing, not focus on what other people are doing to prepare. Do your best work and prepare in your way. And if that means you have to spend six weeks on one scene or one monologue, do it. I'm not going to know how much time you spent. All I'm going to do is see you come into that room and give your best performance. And that's what gets me excited is seeing people come in and do their very best job. So prepare, do everything you can, take time, practice your answers, practice your monologues, practice your dances, and just enjoy the moment because all of that prep, if you are ready, if you are prepared, you're going to walk into every room and just do your very best job.